Welcome back to HPE Discover Barcelona 2025. I'm Dave Nicholson, and I brought my extra brain with me, Will Townsend, the bigger, better brain. Will, thanks for being here. Thanks, I Dave. Really, I really appreciate it. It takes <laughs> a lot of the pressure off. And we've got, uh, we've got Phil and Andreas from HPE. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, we've got some news here. So, Phil, allegedly, you are now the chief sales officer at HPE. Indeed. Tell me it isn't true. Why would you take on a responsibility <laughs> such as this? What were you thinking? Did yes, you consult so with any of your family before agreeing to this? <laughs> they said it's not a good idea. Yeah, no, so, yeah, for about the last month, uh, I've been appointed the chief sales officer. Uh, and I've been with the company now for, it's about six and a half years I've actually been working for HPE. And then before this, I was uh, running the Aruba networking business yeah. for about four I years. I remember. So I yeah. got to know the film. Yeah, well. yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm in uh, the sales role now, but my background is actually in sales. So earlier in my career, I was a salesperson and then a sales manager. So I still remember, you know, what makes a good salesperson and what the customers <laughs> want and need and it's all about listening so in sales there's the old adage you've got two ears and one mouth and you should use them in that proportion <laughs> so that's the way i plan to approach this job you seem to be peering into my soul when you made that last comment <laughs> gonna hip hypnotize you <laughs> all right what do you think will um well um i think phil's uh, the right guy for the job obviously i've known him for quite a while and you know, sales and marketing and partnerships go hand in hand. And, you know, Phil, I'm wondering, you know, SPAR is leaning into resiliency, security, and AI. And I'm just curious, like, how is HPE enabling that journey for such a, a strategic partner like SPAR? Yeah, well, look, we're, we're really excited to be working with uh, Andreas uh, and the team. We've been working on this project for quite a long uh, time now, and it's bringing together all of the capabilities of uh, HPE. So, yeah, we're really pleased to be uh, working with them, delivering a private cloud solution for Spark. So, Andreas, from Spark ICS's perspective, yeah. you know, we've heard a lot of things from HPE here at the show over the last couple of days. What are, what are some of the, the, the highlights for you or the standouts? <coughs> Honestly, the highlight was really less in the morning, so the first 10 minutes, the, the keynote of Antonio, so because he chose me a strategy execution. So, from, from my point of view, there is a broker on the table addressing the top right components where we have to go ahead and where we have to, to, to invest for the future. So I think also the strategy regarding networking, regarding computing, regarding security, and then at the next stage AI is exactly the problem which is on our table. And yesterday I saw really a solid strategy and people on stage, they know what technology means and they know what strategy execution means. So there are not so many salespeople on stage from my <laughs> point of view. <laughs> yeah, really. So, and, and this really enables trust for me. So we have a lot of trust because we are, we are working together with HP since 1995. So oh, it's really, long time. really yeah, a yeah. famous uh, roadmap we are going and there's also a high level of trust. But I was totally impressed about the strategy, about the components, and when you also um, think about what HP did the last year by, by Juniper and so on, so really picking the right uh, partner on board and now shaping a holistic picture of everything you need for stability, for security, for sovereignty, so everything is there and also for innovation. Yeah. So this is, I think there is no other company on this planet who can really deliver that, that in that quality, and I really trust that this will be really reality in the next years. Do, yeah. does, does it feel to you like we're moving from, you know, we're sort of in this, this constant <clears throat> movement towards execution from vision, but we're getting, you know, we're more in the execution zone now. Yeah. Would you agree? This is exactly the point because, you know, I'm talking to a lot of people, or a lot of people are talking to me about AI and something yeah. like that. I think 80% is, is, is yeah, on another universe, so maybe it could come in or not. So I, I think here I see really the reality. Mm -hmm. So if you look in, in operations, if, if you look on networks, if you look on security, and also I think that also, I think the strategy and, and the, the tactic is to say, for example, security is nothing on top. It's really inside all the components. Sure. So I think this is what we need. And, and this is, from my point of view, the difference of HPE. Here we are talking about reality. 
yeah. we are not talking about some dreams. And here are people who know exactly how the future will look like and not talking about how the future could look like. Yeah, and I think, I think Antonio summed it up really well during the keynote. The theme this year is discover what's next. Yeah. And so it's no longer proof of concept, it's moving things into production, right? Andres, I'm wondering, like, from your perspective, the combination of Aruba networking and Juniper, what excites you the most about the two, those two business units coming together? As I said before, I think it's the combination. There's technology, right. there enabling technology with, with all this uh, Wi-Fi stuff and so on, so networking from and from the data center to the edge. Sure. And Juniper is bringing on all the security components and so on, and moving, bringing that together to really to one holistic yeah. environment. Yeah. With much more also if you're talking about morphos and so on. So this is really, everything is on the table. And, I, and everything is more or less, and you can see it here, also on the software level, it's really reality. It's really working together. Right. And I think that's so, if you think, if you think about security, so we need, a high integrated environment. And but that's what, because I was here two years ago where, where, where Antonio talked about the Juniper stuff, now it's reality. Right. And, and we see really the, let, let me say, the, first of all, the experience, but also the advantages now having this all together in one big family. Right. And it's making the, the network one of the enforcement points for security, right? right. And, um, and, you know, bolt on, it just, it creates gaps. I also like how Abstra, and uh, HPE Ops Ramp is coming together for observability to drive better you know, security control and also network assurance. But I know you're very focused on creating uh, the retail fu uh, future experience um, in innovating in digital experience. And I'm wondering, what are you leaning into from, from HPE to ensure secure and sovereign you know, deployments because that's you know, sovereignty is a very important aspect in the European Union, right? Mm -hmm. So, let me say in, in that way, two years ago, the focus was super on the supply chain, yeah? So we invested a lot into automation, so I think there are a lot of challenges bringing thousands of goods and, and also the assortment is, is, is changing every day. So, and we, and we, we have to run a 24 hours, seven day business and more, more or less we are critical infrastructure because the people, they need food. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have to think about how we, how we establish and how we enable the right technology on that. So we, with our Snowball project, we started two years ago and, and the, 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 initial, the initial ideas is coming from Barcelona together with Mark Walters and Antonio to say, hey, we, can, we have to go in that direction because also if you talk about sovereignty and business critical, we're now having geo-redundancy in Austria, so we have two data centers. 300 kilometers in different regions. And with, with the HP technology, we really are now able to switch over an application. And this application, we didn't really change something on the application. Really, with all this infrastructure and with this platform, we can move one application to the, to the other side within one minute, and we do not lose data. So we do not lose any order. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is, from my point of view, a super achievement because talking about applications, the applications, they are not, they are not focusing on, on reliability, on business continuity, on geo-redundancy. And that, I think, is for us import, important to have this reliability and also because the environment is changing a lot. So if you ask me five years ago about blackout, uh -huh. <laughs> but now it's reality. And that's right. why we're really investing in this geo-redundancy. And on the other side, I think we are moving forward uh, to enable a lot of applications also much more focused to, to, to the end customer. So was it five years ago supply chain where we, can, where we could say, okay, if there is an outage of two hours, we can manage it. Start at four hours, it will become critical. Currently, we are having a lot of direct communication with cons consumers, 24 hours. Yeah. And if we have issues, technical issues, in 10 minutes, we will have the war in the stores mm -hmm. because they could not manage their promotions, they, 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 could, yeah. they cannot use the payments and so on. So this is, this is, I think, for these applications, and we really want now to focus to digitize and to communicate with the, with the, with the consumer on that level. So we need a perfect infrastructure, reliability, and, and on the other side, of course, performance. Sure. So don't, we, yeah. we, we, we shouldn't forget that. Right. And also, I think, uh, I think a perspective on the future to say, 
we need a, we need a partner. They they can follow also our strategies because I see a lot of of things which are which are coming in, especially if you talk a little bit of AI because. I think we had a lot. We are. We have now really a lot of, or let me say, ten business cases, really in place where AI is really delivering business value. Sure. So not not the simple things like oh, uh, translation services and so on. So I think there is a lot. And here I need the technology. I need the partner. And the, and I also need a kind of continuity in the in the in the in the common strategy. Yeah. So. Yeah, because the opportunity cost to a retailer is huge, right? With yeah. any downtime, right? Yeah. And the whole notion of a self-driving network and AI native is is yeah. super, super and, compelling. And, and that's what I said before. If you see now on the portfolio, it's exactly what we need. Right. And and everything is and and if it's most of it is coming from one supplier, yeah. it's really it's really integrated highly and is following the same strategy. I think this is really a big value for us. Yeah. So Phil, what does success look like when you think of the relationship between HPE and SPAR? Looking out a year, year and a half, you know, 2026, 2027. Yeah. Well, I mean, what does success look like? Yeah, I mean, so we're really pleased to have Spar as a customer. And from a relationship perspective, I think it feels really good. I mean, the, the things that we like, uh, you know, is what kind of Andreas was just talking about there, you know, the levels of innovation and the fact that they're really doing stuff. You know, it's not a kind of a talking project. It's a very live kind of implementation. So, you know, I guess the uh, definition of uh, success would be, you know, a kind of mutually beneficial relationship, you know, so these guys, um, continue to grow in the market with resiliency and a brilliant service, and we're happy to be a partner with them. So, so Phil, um, I think you're confusing implementation with sales in your answer. I was looking for a revenue number. <laughs> <laughs> the answer was supposed to be very simple, a number, okay? You got to get used to the new know, gig, yeah, exactly. Phil. <laughs> you got to get used to the mind. new gig. I need to reset my mind. A share of wallet percentage. <laughs> I was waiting. I was waiting for your answer to. to, to, but to that's, uh, that's the difference. So they are not talking about, about as I said, sales and, and figures. We are talking about solutions which yes. are bringing value. No, I know. They drive I know. business And that's what, sales, here, that's what sales is all yeah, about at this level. It's about successful implementation. It's exactly old, right. It's, it's about finding interesting projects with interesting customers that really make a difference. I mean, that's really what we're interested in. Yeah. 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 Well, so Phil, what do you, what do you, I mean, you know, it's, a, it's sort of a softball question to say, you know, what have you been impressed by here at HPE Discover well, Barcelona? But what, you know, just the, the vibe, I mean, even compared to Las Vegas. Yeah. I, um, mean, look, I mean, the show was hugely oversubscribed. Right. I mean, yeah. I mentioned to Will Shocking. earlier, I think we had yeah. to stop taking yeah. invites. Like, you sold it out for the first oh, time. Yeah. yeah. Over, yeah. Oversold it, right? Yeah. So. And I think it's almost doubled in its level of attendance over the last sort of two to three years. Um, and obviously the Vegas show is even bigger, isn't it? It's like mm -hmm. a multitude bigger. So um, yeah, I think, look, when I think about the what's going on externally, so the external trends, right? You've got lots of customers concerned about rising costs of virtualization. You've got lots of interest in AI, but I think now people are really looking for projects to implement and get value. With that comes questions about where should data sit, data sovereignty, costs of having data in the public cloud, right? Mm. Other things as well that we're seeing or hearing from customers is, because with AI there's so much data going around the network, they're really concerned about security. So they want to make sure that the network is protected. So with that, there's a lot of upgrade activity, but also using AI in the platforms, be that either Mist or Aruba Central, looking out for odd behavior on the network. So when you think about all of these things coming together, it feels like we're, you know, they're the external things. It feels like we're in a great position, yeah. doesn't it? I mean, if because, you, you know, success in business, a lot of it's about strategy and execution, but a bit of luck helps as well, doesn't it, yeah. right? You know, there's that phrase, isn't it? It's going to be lucky Luck and timing. good, yeah. right? <laughs> but, yeah. you know, so, so it feels like externally, the market is moving our way. Yeah. And, um, you know, as Andrea said, you know, if you listen to the uh, keynote that Antonio did yesterday, we've got all the right products in the right spaces. So, yeah, that's been the exciting thing from my perspective. And I've had a lot of partner and customer meetings this week 
And in all of the meetings, there's lots of stuff to talk about. So it feels like the portfolio is really on point. Well, Will and I are, you know, sort of objective observers of all of this. And yeah. Trust me, we would tell you if we disagreed with you on that <laughs> yeah, yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would, we would, we'd let you know. Uh, but, but I think, I think we're seeing, you know, we're 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 getting that same vibe. Yeah, it's yeah, really sure. interesting. Yeah. It's yeah. and 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 <clears throat> myself coming from an infrastructure background, I feel like I feel it's a bit of a revenge against the hyperscale yeah. cloud providers yeah, that you right. know that we have a lot of relevance in the age of AI. There's yeah. there's no question about it. Gentlemen, thank you so much for thank joining us. Will again, thank you. That thank was you, so Dave. relaxing for me. Thanks for joining us here, HPE Discover Barcelona 2025. Stay tuned to 6.5 on the road. We'll be right back with more interesting content.